everyone. Thank you for taking some time to be thoughtful on this Thursday. <laughs> it's just, I have to be thoughtful to even remember it's Thursday. So that's where I'm at. Uh, and so we are going to be having a conversation today about the faculty peer observation process, being that everything is online. Um, and unless maybe you are teaching dance or some of the classes that are on campus. Um, a lot of us already taught hybrid or online courses and went through a peer observation with those online classes, but there wasn't really a um, hunter-wide conversation about it. Xiao Chuan and I, about four or five years ago, started to look at um, the standard peer observation process that was going on in departments and how we could uh, support it with some um, observation protocols that were more geared for when you're going to observe, let's say, Rob, I'm gonna come watch your course. I'm assigned to you for faculty peer observation. How would the form be different or the process um, be more aligned to the fact that you're teaching online? And one of the things that Xiao and I realized early on was that most of the tools out there are really to evaluate or provide guidance or feedback on a whole online course. So most of those rubrics and checklists and things that you see um, that are really great, but they're really for like a comprehensive view of an entire course. And what we were really looking for was how do we go in just for that one session that one session could be Tuesday night. It could be the week, uh, week five, or a module, depending on whether the course is synchronous or asynchronous, et cetera. So what um, we are going to be talking about today um, is a couple of the protocols that we've brought forward to the provost's office and we shared at the Senate that I think went out to departments they're not prescriptive, they're not something mandated. It's just to help you in departments decide what makes sense for you and to open the conversation about it. So uh, I believe Jenny is going to be here, um, Michi and Young, who will also share some thoughts. And I know they probably have to leave on the little earlier side. So I'm gonna kind of jump into it a little bit. So if you can open up your chat really quickly, if you don't already have it open, and uh, pop in your um, department um, and your kind of thoughts, questions, concerns, because even if we can't answer them all today um, and you, or you have to leave, we wanna know what's on your mind. What's on your mind in regard to um, faculty peer observation in the current context? Uh, maybe you have a question you have on your mind, a concern, a challenge. Um, what about evaluation and, and how will this fit? Um, so it would be great to see who is um, participating today and some of the questions that you have. So I'm going to just give you a moment to go to the chat and tell us what's on your mind. Um, yeah, great social work, how to get a full picture when you are literally getting just a glimpse. And, I, and while you're typing, I'll just say, that is exactly right. You are getting a glimpse and you always were because if you came to me physically and sat in my class for an hour or two, you were getting a glimpse and now you're also getting a glimpse. And that's all um, these moments are, is a chance to see teaching it doesn't lead you to decide that the teacher is one way or the other. You're capturing particular practices at a particular moment. Um, so I'm going to let you continue to kind of post some things in your questions and your concerns. And thank you, um, Magdalena is asking, what should I be looking for? So that's something that we're going to talk about um, or offer a little bit uh, around. So we're going to just in this quick, quick um, opening is just talking about making peer observation criteria more transparent and limited. Because again, you're seeing a, a, a moment, you're not seeing a whole course. 
looking at the PSC CUNY contractual guidelines and language around this, because that of course has to guide us. Uh, thinking about your department in terms of pre-observation and post-observation protocols that wrap around the uh, observation. And then of course, questions, concerns, et cetera. So one of the things I think that uh, I wanted to just put forward before we open up is that these peer observations, while they are um, contractual obligations, while they are evaluative and they are very simple in the evaluation, it's basically you met the criteria you didn't or it's a satisfactory, unsatisfactory, or maybe in some of your departments you say, you know, cold, medium, hot, you have, it's always an evaluation. But um, for the vast majority, and the vast majority of us um, are going to get satisfactory, okay? So this is really about professional learning. How can this moment that we're all in this completely new situation, because even if we've taught online before, our whole worlds at Hunter were not online before. So we're all in a way as professors, new teachers again. And a lot of us are trying so many new approaches and meeting so many different challenges with our Hunter students also taking all of their classes online. So this is a chance for us to, even if we're experienced or if we're new to say, what are these effective practices? We know there's been a lot of training and support um, thanks to Xiao and, and thanks to Paul and all of the workshops and modules that are always going on. But when you come in to visit this class, so let's say I'm gonna say Virginia, I'm coming to see Virginia's class. Where, what practices am I seeing? And where is Virginia in her growth as a professor, as an instructor? And instead of saying, oh, well, maybe this is gonna be over, I'll never have to teach online again. We know better, right? We know that it could be in the spring, could be next fall. It could be something that we continue even as a hybrid practice for years to come now. So we want to really embrace it as an opportunity to actually stop and talk about our practice as professors, not if our publications, not our committees, um, not our research, but just our teaching and in a very, tangible way because I now have someone visiting me and Virginia and I not only am I going to give her the satisfactory most likely it's going to well Virginia definitely because I know she will be but it's a chance for us to have an exchange and actually touch base I might see something Virginia is using and say how did you do that I want to use that so how can this be a moment for support Faculty to faculty direct learning and support. This is gonna be someone in your own department who knows your discipline, who can see the disciplinary practices that you're implementing, but also this layer of these online teaching practices. So when you go and you wanna know what are those effective practices? What are some things I can look for? This is a document that um, we've developed in the School of Education, Gina Riley, who I think is here, um, and I worked on it. We had layers of faculty look at it. Xiao was very involved. Um, and then we brought it to Jenny in the provost's office. Is it perfect? No, but it's a place to look at some of what we know from research on effective online teaching are some of these look for. So this is clickable. So I will share the, um, the link to this with you, but basically this is a document um, that gives you a checklist. Now by checklist, I don't mean you have to do everything on this checklist, no. This is really a tool to use to help you think about your online class. And as an observer, think about some of the items you might want to look for. So we try to make it about not your discipline because we don't know your discipline, things that are generic and things that can be seen in a single online visit. And that could be a synchronous visit. So I'm gonna to go to Maria, I'm gonna watch her class at a certain time, she's live, she's on Zoom or whatever. And these are some of the areas. 
her time management, the learning environment, how she was engaging the students, how she was giving feedback, okay? But maybe I'm going to see Dan, I'm gonna see his class and it's async. So I'm actually able to also observe quite a few things in an async environment. And we felt it was really important to offer faculty the look for's when you observe an async session, because it's a little hard to figure that out at first, but a lot of the same elements apply. Again, what's the environment for students entering your async session? How are you engaging the students? How are you giving assessment and feedback um, information to them? So we offer this as a tool. Um, I will post the links in a moment to all of these. And this is just as a tool, again, for the professional learning piece, it can be something that you could begin. So Maria, hola Maria, so I see Maria there. Okay, so I'm gonna come observe her and I can say, listen, I got this tool, let's both look at it. Is there something on there that you think you want to focus on when I come observe you? And she could say, you know what? I'm really trying to get students to do more peer talk and I'm trying breakout rooms and I'm trying this, could you look at that? And then we can use each other as um, learning partners. And really that's what this process should be again for the vast majority of us. Um, we need to think about, of course, those contractual guidelines though. So Jenny Tootin did a really awesome piece of investigation because she went to the contract and she pulled and digested for us um, some of the important things we should keep in mind. So I'll just highlight them here. They're also available in that document, but let's say you're coming to observe Samantha and Samantha, I'm coming to observe you um, and it's an asynchronous class, okay? So the rules are that Samantha has to give me access as a guest or a student to her Blackboard site um, for no more than a 48 hour period, okay, around her class. So you are, I'm not gonna go into Samantha's class and sit there and watch it the whole semester, okay? It's, it's delimited in that way. Um, within 48 hours of receiving notice, okay, Samantha has to tell her students that that's going to happen and that I'm going to be in the class, okay? So these are just important notes. The, um, the synchronous class, so let's say I'm going to see Jeannie. I'm gonna watch her teach live at a certain time. She's using Zoom. Okay, so again, she has to allow me access for the time period of the class. And I don't, I'm not giving the Zoom link for every other class, but for that class. And again, she needs to tell her students that I will be in there, okay? Right now, we don't really have hybrid classes, but the cont contract goes on and specifies when the class is hybrid, the um, observation should occur on a, synchronous, on a synchronous lesson whenever possible, okay? So that's also in there. You can obviously look at it more, and we do have some of this language here, but I think it's helpful to know um, that this is what needs to happen. And if you need assistance and how do I bring in um, someone to be that observer, Shao can help as well um, in the Blackboard folks. Okay. Um, the a protocol is really helpful in the School of Education, in my department of curriculum and teaching. We've always had a pre-observation and a post-observation process. So again, this is um, a document that we're happy to share with you. And it basically specifies the PSC language right at the front um, that you need to give me access for 48 hours. You have to tell me which session it is that I'm coming in to observe um, because it might be async and I'm not gonna know which one. And again, the syllabus that's always been there but maybe it's on the course site. And it gives um, the observed professor a chance to know what it is that you want me to look for or look at or any particular challenges, um, any areas you want feedback on, okay? And then in the post-observation uh, conference interaction, I can go back and talk about some of the things that you set out um, as look-fors or interest areas in the observation process. 
Okay, so I'm gonna pause here because I know there's probably a lot of questions and conversation we wanna have. And I know Jenny might be here. So I wanna start with Jenny, if you are here to kick us off and then maybe Michi and Young can jump in as well. And then we'll open it up to a larger conversation. I'm gonna stop sharing so we can see each other better. I'm gonna post a link to this slide deck and those resources um, into the chat. And I think 